Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today, we're gonna to be focused in on mounting the head to our 2016 Yamaha YXZ1000R. Now, if you've been keeping up with this build, you know that this engine is eventually gonna have a turbo attached to it. So the head has to be mounted a little bit differently than the uh, stock configuration. Now, beyond that, we're gonna go ahead and install the camshafts and set the timing. So you really wanna pay close attention as we go through this particular part of the build. Now, if you're ready, let me go open up my toolbox and we'll dive into this. So the studs I decided to go with are manufactured by ARP, well known throughout the industry. This particular variant is the 625 aged. Now the installation process is pretty straightforward. When you're installing these in, just bottom them out finger tight. There is no torque involved. I'm going to be using red Loctite to hold them in place on each one. Not mandatory, it's just the way I prefer to do it. Finger tight and that is it. Now once you put the red Loctite on there and bring it down finger tight, you don't want a lot of time to pass because you want the final torque on the bolts to be done before that red Loctite sets up. Now do note the threads above your water pump is open down there. So don't force it past, otherwise it has a chance of hitting those inner gears. So on that one, I'm gonna go all the way down and back it up just a quarter of a turn, well, half a turn. Now the reason you're not able to use just the OEM head bolts is they're stretch bolts. These are not. The challenge with a forced induction engine is higher compression and it's gonna stretch those bolts even after they're already torqued down. And guess what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna blow a head gasket. It's not if, it's when. With these, once we torque them in place, that'll be it. And also with these, you can apply a higher torque. The 625s, you can go up to 65 foot-pounds. And we're gonna go across the board at 60. Another advantage, not that you ever wanna take advantage of this, is that these are reusable. So if you had to remove the head for whatever reason, you could reuse the studs. All right, now let's go ahead and get our dowels in place, the head gasket, and we'll autograph this one for good luck too. <laughs> All right, you need to be careful at this part, and if you've got anybody nearby that can help you, you're going to need a, a third hand to uh, get the head lowered in. It's because it's so important to hold the timing chain and the guides dead center when you're lowering the head down. Now you can do this solo, but I wouldn't recommend it. Next, we're gonna be using the assembly lubricant. ARP sends this out with all of their products. And the trick here is we want to get it on the threads, both on the stud itself and inside of the nut, but not on the washers. Now to accomplish this, I'll just be using a fairly small flat blade because it is tight. I know it would have been easier to get it on the studs before we put the head down, but then you run the risk of knocking it off when you're lowering the head into position. So just go ahead and do it after. Now let's go ahead and get our washers in place. All right, then we do apply a little bit of the lubrication to the bottom of the nut itself. There should be enough left when we put it on the threads. It's just on the bottom side of the washer that they don't want you to get any lubrication on. Now we're going to tighten these down in three stages. To make life easier, I wrote down the pattern on the head using just a permanent marker. The first pass is going to be at 15 foot-pounds. Second pass, 30. Third pass, taking it to 60. Here's where it gets a little bit scary. You ought to hear my shoulders popping. <laughs> Grinding. There it is. And what we're looking for here, guys, is top dead center for cylinder number three. And to find that, you've got these two marks that are parallel to each other. You bring it around 
and that you want to be right in between those two marks. Now you can verify it by just putting a screwdriver into spark plug number three and you can see where it reaches the top of the stroke. So that verifies that it is indeed at top dead center. What I'm doing now guys is I had numbered the intake and the exhaust buckets and that's important because I want them to go back in the same slots that they were in. Now as far as the shims go the chances of them being the right tolerance are, well, just about zero, but we're gonna go ahead and write down what each one of them is. That way, when we take our measurements, we already know we can go plug it into our formula to determine what size shim needs to go in to replace it to bring it within spec. Because these numbers will be important when we go back and set the valve lash. And yes, I realize that I'm putting this together dry. There's no oil, there's no assembly lube, because let's be honest, it's just going to make a mess because all of this is going to get taken apart and we're only going to be rotating it over one time. So I think it can survive that. Well, we'll give Yamaha this. So far it's 192, 190, 191. I mean, <laughs> that's not much variation. That, that tells you that speaks volumes right there about their tolerance levels so far anyway. So here's our starting point. Now on the exhaust side, starting at cylinder number one, you've got 186, 188, 189, 191, 190, and 192. Now on the intake side, you've got 190, 186, 186, 190, 190, 189. All right, guys, now that we've got our tappets in place, let's grab our camshafts and get them put in and get it timed. Now, your intake cam is easily identifiable by this larger section compared to the exhaust cam. Now, we want to do our intake first. You want to have, of course, this at top dead center. Lift this up or pull that, pull the that side of the chain up and we want our cam lobes to be at split overlap. So they're both going to be pointing this way and this way for both the intake and the exhaust. And once we tighten that down with the cap, those two marks should be parallel. We're going to do our exhaust. It's going to be about right there. That is probably going to be it once we get everything tightened down. Now, because these teeth are so easy for it to jump around, use a couple of zip ties to hold it in place. Otherwise, you'll be chasing your tail trying to keep them in the correct location as you're tightening down the caps. When you're tightening down the, the main cap up front, try to bring it down level Otherwise, it'll bind up, potentially damaging the surface, trying to get those dowels to seat properly. Now, you'll notice that the other lobes are all facing up, so there shouldn't be any tension on cylinders one and two. Now, once we get the tensioner in place, it's going to pull the exhaust cam into position, and you're going to have your four marks. One, two three, four. And then you can verify that back here because that dot is going to be in line with this mark right here and here. Now let's go ahead and get our other caps in place. If you did not mark yours, they actually have markings on them. There's an I there and an E here. And of course the arrows are both pointing forward. Now we will be using a manually adjustable chain tensioner but for right now we're going to go ahead and put the stock one back in which I've reset it because we will need to set the valve lash so we don't need to put in the manual one just yet. All right we've got our tensioner in place now let's go ahead and release it and all we're doing is reaching in and pushing on the edge of the, the guide to get that spring to release 
and then it'll put tension on the chain. Now you never want to rotate this engine counterclockwise because if you do, you run the risk of it jumping time. Now as long as you keep going in a clockwise orientation, everything will be fine, but don't try to go backwards. Now that's the little bit unnerving part. At each part of your rotation, one camera or another is going to try to jump up. That's why you never want to rotate it the opposite direction. See? And that's also another reason why we're going to go with a manually adjustable tensioner. Resist the temptation to try to go backwards there. We're going to go around one more time. That's it. That should be at your compression stroke, and it is because the lobes are facing this way. But we're going to bring it around one more time. Now that's where we started. There we are. We're back at our top dead center, split overlap, intake exhaust so she is timed correctly so before we can call this done let's get in these last three bolts here here and then one that goes right through there now these last two are going to be 8.7 foot pounds and everything's snug now it's just hand tight right now. Let's go ahead and go across the board, working from inside out, and get them torqued to 7.2 foot-pounds. All right, guys, this is going to wrap up this video. And I know setting the timing on this is a little bit odd. Most of the engine I've ever done on cylinder number one, you're doing it on the compression stroke. That's not the case with this one. They want you set it at that split overlap, so make sure you don't make that mistake. Now there's still more for us to do as far as getting it set up for you know, when it's ready to run. We are going to replace this automatic tensioner with a manual one because I want to keep constant tension on that chain. It just makes me a little uneasy seeing it pop back and forth. Well listen, if you need these or any other parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at Partzilla.com we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla. We will see you in the next video.